Oh my God. Oh my God, it's all <laughs> I thought it would take maybe one year or two years to really get to a place where I feel like I love what I'm doing and I'm making money to support myself. I was basically living paycheck to paycheck the last four years. I actually literally do not have enough money from my business to pay for things. But I can truly say that all of this was so worth it. I didn't think it would take this long, but even after these four years, technically five years because I started my calligraphy business five years ago, but I quit my job four years ago, so technically it's five years. I'm not saying you can't be successful in six months or one year. I'm just sharing that for me, it took a really, really long time, longer than what I thought. And I think for a lot of people, this is very realistic. Like it takes several years for you to get to a place where you are really happy in your career. Of course, there are still a lot of challenges I go through, but these are challenges that I want to have. Like I like having these challenges because it means I've leveled up. In this video, I want to share with you five things that really helped me build this dream life that I've always wanted. And I hope that wherever you are on your journey, these can really help you out. The first thing is if you start, you are more ahead than 92% of people who will never start. Honestly, if you can just get yourself to start, you have done half of the work of starting a business. Once you start, it is just so much easier. It's way easier to go from one to two than from zero to one. The zero to one hurdle is the hardest. Right now, if you're feeling stuck, I would say start by doing what feels easy for you and what makes sense and what doesn't feel like just such a struggle. For me, when I started my business five years ago, I thought that was starting a calligraphy business and selling greeting cards. Uh, design some stuff, print some stuff, I write some stuff and then buy some envelopes. Like it seems like not that hard to do compared to me starting a blog and monetizing the blog and making passive income. Like I thought that was really, really hard to make money. I had no idea how to monetize the blog, but I thought, okay, I can sell you know, a card that's like $5 to people. I can probably get my friends to buy it. And I'm just gonna start from there. I'm going to register my business and design some stuff, see if I can print it, see if I can sell it. And then I'm just gonna go from there. For you, maybe that's starting an Etsy shop. Maybe it's YouTube, maybe it's freelancing or tutoring. Right now, you just need to start. Something is better than nothing. It doesn't have to be perfect. Something is better than nothing. Oh yeah, you can also start, but just don't tell people. I actually did that. I started the calligraphy business. I started an Instagram in secret and I didn't tell anybody for like a week. There is no right time to quit your job. Some people say, don't do it till you have made your income back from your side hustle. Some people say, do it right away or else you're, like, you're just never gonna do it. For me, I was kind of in the middle. I was making about $1,000 in revenue from my calligraphy business. And that is when I quit my job. At the time, it felt so weird. It felt so crazy. Crazy, but I basically wanted more time to work on my business. I knew that if I had more time, I could make more money. It was just that I was always working in my job and that's why I couldn't make more than $1,000 a month. Usually when you're starting a business, you're either giving up your time or your money. For those of you who have financial responsibilities, mortgage, kids, like for me, I was very grateful that I quit my job when I didn't really have any responsibilities. Very grateful that I could live at home and I didn't really have any big expenses to pay. So for me, the thinking was, let me try this for a year. If it doesn't work out, then I can always go back and get a job. But if you are thinking about quitting your job, make sure you've got your bases covered financially, even if that means quitting your job, getting a part-time job. Oh, there's also like sabbaticals. You can ask your organization if you can take like a six month sabbatical or go part-time for the summer, see how flexible things are. Or maybe if you're not working remotely, see if you can get a few days remote, then you can save two hours on your commute, then you can work on your business. The next thing is I really had to learn how to manage my mind. After I quit my job, it wasn't managing my time that was really difficult or managing my energy. It was actually managing my mind and all the stress and anxiety and all the worries about, oh my gosh, I'm not gonna make money. Oh my gosh, like, I don't know if I can do this in six months and make money and prove to my family that I don't need to get a job. There were a couple people in my life that suggested I start meditating and oh my God, it has been so life-changing. <laughs> I started just doing mindfulness meditation five minutes a day, then I could do 10 minutes a day. And I also read this book because I was 
pretty like, I don't know if meditation is going to work for me. I read this book from Dan Harris called Meditation for Fidgety Skeptics, which I'll link below, but it basically dispelled all the things, like all the thoughts that I had about meditation that I was like, is this really going to work? Like what's the scientific reasoning behind this? Does it actually work? So that book really helped me understand what is the point of meditation. And I can honestly say that after a couple years of meditating, I am so much more aware of my thoughts and I can manage my mind so much better. I can manage my mindset and I can stop myself and I can stop myself when I'm having a thought that I don't want and I can just let it pass and not let it define me and ruin my day. I also did a lot of mindset work around self-doubt, imposter syndrome, stress about money, what people think of me and like feeling stuck and behind in life because all my friends are like buying their first or second properties and I'm here not making money and taking a gamble on my career and thinking this might work or it might not. And there were a lot of times where I just really felt like a failure. One of the things that really helped me is writing out a new definition of success because I felt like a failure all the time. I felt stuck and behind and like not good enough. So my new definition of success was success is learning and growing every single day. If I do that, then I am successful. Success for me doesn't mean making $10,000 every month or having 100,000 subscribers. It's that if I grow and if I learn every single day, then I am successful. The next thing that really, really helped me is investing in myself. Oh my God, it was like super duper scary to do it at first. I got my first business coach when I was transitioning from my calligraphy business to an online coaching business to help calligraphers. It was around 3,000 USD to work with my coach for three months. And at the time, like $3,000, that was so much money to me. Like it was super duper scary because I wasn't sure if I could make the money back, if I could be successful. But when I put down that money, it really made me feel like, yes, I'm doing this. I can do this. I put the money down. I have to do this. In a way, it's like when you put the money down, your mind automatically starts thinking about ways that you can make it work. You have to make it work or else all of this money, you know? And actually by the end of the three months, I made five times the $3,000 that I invested in myself. And it was the best investment that I ever made in my entire life. Actually, I invested and other coaches after this, like other business coaches and other life coaches, the decision to invest after the first time was a lot more easier. And I did get so much out of the other coaching that I did. I also bought some courses and stuff like that, group coaching. But the first time I remember I was so scared. But like after doing this many times, I realized how amazing it is how much I've learned and how much I've grown as a person. It wasn't just about me making more money in my business. I really improved my mindset with working with these coaches, especially the life coach. I feel like I'm a better person. I'm better in my relationships. I'm a better friend. I'm more confident in myself because I invested in myself. Investing in yourself can be a lot of different things. So I talked about coaching mainly, but it could also be courses. It could also be books, resources, joining some kind of mastermind group or stuff like that. You decide what feels right for you and what you think will really help you in your business or in your career and take that risk. Maybe if you spend $1,000 on a course, you might not get make $1,000 back in the next couple of months, but your mindset will be changed and that will be so much more worth the $1,000 that you spent because these mindset changes can last you a whole lifetime. Maybe it's worth like $50,000, the mindset shifts or the lessons that you learned through whatever thing you invested. The next thing is do not be scared of pivoting. For me, I made two big pivots in the last four years. So it was my calligraphy business going to a coaching business and my coaching business to a content creation business, which is basically my YouTube. And even though I was making money with the calligraphy business, I was mainly teaching calligraphy workshops. And then with the coaching, I was making money. I felt like I wasn't meant for this basically. And that's why I never felt like I made it because the stuff that I was doing, even though I was making some money from it, I did enjoy, I do enjoy calligraphy. I do enjoy coaching people, but I just knew in my heart that this isn't the thing that I'm gonna do long-term. I knew that the calligraphy and the coaching, these were the steps that I had to take to get to where I am now. Honestly, I don't think at the beginning I could have become a YouTuber because I would be like way too scared. I was like not confident at all. Like I could not do it. 
So actually I was thinking about pivoting out of my coaching business to do YouTube for half a year, okay? It was so hard to make that decision because I felt like I was coaching for two years and that's what people knew me for, that was my income. And I felt like if I let go of the coaching, I would just be wasting everything. It would be like sunk cost, I would never get it back. And I would be starting from scratch with the YouTube. Actually with the YouTube, I was at about 2000 subscribers when I decided to go all in on YouTube. I was not monetized and I was thinking, oh my gosh, how can I go from my coaching business where I'm making money to now doing YouTube and I'm not making money. And so that pivot was actually the scariest for me. But if you know you are meant to do something, you are gonna make it work. So when I pivoted, I did a bunch of random side gigs like driving for Uber Eats, pet sitting, making TikTok videos for a company. And that was enough cash to pull me through until I started my Etsy shop and then the YouTube started to get bigger. The next thing that really helped me is finding a community of people and having support in my business. And sometimes this means letting people go. There were some people in my life where I felt like they were draining my energy. They were not supportive of my business. And I just felt suppressed whenever I was with them. And I felt like I couldn't be my Myself. So it was really hard, but I had to let those people go and create more space for people who are really supportive of me and they really cheer me on. They're happy for me when even if I have like the smallest win. And in the past year or so, I've been connecting a lot more with people who are creatives and content creators. And it's been so nice to be able to talk with them and talk about our problems and like share our ideas because I feel like they really understand me and I feel really supported and I feel like I'm not alone in this. So if you're looking for a community, you can definitely find friends who are doing similar things or make new friends who are doing similar things, but you can also join group coaching programs or memberships, or if you buy a course, sometimes they have like a Facebook group that you can join. And that is also a community. Sometimes in your city, it can be really hard to find people who are similar minded as you, but I mean, the world is so big and we have the internet. If you are thinking about starting your business or you're thinking about quitting your job, I really hope that you can find find the courage to do what's right for you and to do what you're meant to do, even if it feels really, really scary. If you have a dream and you're not sure if it's possible, check this video out because I explain the whole story of how I was able to achieve this dream, which is to travel and work, which is basically filming content and working on my things like the Etsy shop and my YouTube and I have this other business idea.